when Florida and Tennessee met one year ago, there was something in the air that has carried over to the long-awaited rematch today. University of Florida takes the field at Tennessee with the Gators' goals almost identical to the vision of the Volunteers. The symmetry of these two schools starts at quarterback. Two gunslingers who hit their targets anywhere on the turf. Danny Werfel seeks nothing less than a national championship and believes his Gators will climb over the top this year. But Peyton Manning is giving chase to the national championship, too. For the coaches, Steve Spurrier has worn the crown of the SEC four times, something Philip Fulmer hopes to fulfill. It's a guaranteed high-speed showdown that should be wide open. Football at its fearless best, all out for an eventual shot at number one. The buildup has lasted a year, and now it's arrived. Florida takes on Tennessee, coming up next on CBS. Game ritual for Peyton Manning is complete. He arrived early to read through the game program cover to cover before putting on the pads. His counterpart, Danny Werfel, has ridden into town ready to play an uncharacteristic villainous role against the Volunteers. It's a duel everyone wants to see, a jaw-dropping 107,000 on hand for Florida and Tennessee. There is so much electricity inside Neyland Stadium. Danny Werfel and the Gators, however, have come out of their locker room, which took a little electrical hit. No electricity for the Gators. Now for the rest of the team's performers to take center stage. Tennessee ranks second in the country with wins over UNLV and UCLA. to join their captains, 2-0, ranked fourth in the nation, with wins over Southwestern Louisiana and Georgia Southern. everyone, Jim Nance, along with Terry Donahue. What a scene we have for you today from Neyland Stadium. How about it, Terry? Well, Jim, this is extraordinary. These fans are passionate. They've been ready to play the game since this morning. So much on the line. Everyone figures the SEC champion, a possible national championship uh, appearance later on in the year. 
But what about Tennessee's game plan? The last loss for the Volunteers was against Florida last year. What are they going to do here today? Well, Tennessee has been preparing for this game for a year. They've looked at a lot of film. They like the Nebraska-Florida game out of the Fiesta Bowl. They've studied that film. Nebraska shut down the Florida offense with blitzes and a fierce pass rush. Tennessee's going to try to do that today. The question is, do they have the personnel to do it? Florida, for their part, has a brilliant, brilliant head coach in Steve Spurrier. He's the best in the business. He didn't like what happened to him in the Fiesta Bowl. He's made some subtle changes in his offense. He's not going to let it happen again. Well, the quarterbacks have certainly gotten the headlines here. Peyton Manning, the junior from Tennessee, and senior Danny Warfel, who last year threw six touchdowns against Tennessee in that 62-37 victory. But, Terry, you believe it's more than just the quarterbacks to look out for. Well, I do. In big games like this, I think it's the linemen, those guys that are fighting and out in the trenches, those offense and defensive linemen, for the last six years, the team that has run the ball the best in this game has won the game. I think that could happen today. Well, Terry, it's been raining now for about an hour. Coming down pretty forcefully, too. Let's get a sideline report. Welcome to our crew again, Michelle Tafoya. Michelle, take it away. All right, Jim. Well, this rain isn't dampening anyone's spirits, especially Phil Fulmer's. In his locker room speech just moments ago, he told his team, guys, the talking is over. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. This is the moment you've been waiting for since you walked off that field in Florida a year ago today. This is the opportunity you've been waiting for. You made a commitment to yourselves, a commitment to each other. And guess what, guys? This opportunity won't come back again. Jim? <laughs> All right, Michelle. Terry, what about the weather factor here today? Well, Jim, these teams are very similar, so I'm not sure the weather's going to have a direct effect on how they're going to play or their style of play, but what the weather does affect are all the little subtleties in the game. The quarterback center exchange, if you will, the kicking game, whether or not running backs hang on to that ball. Those are the things that are going to be affected by the weather. Tennessee won the coin toss and elected to defer. So Chris Hogue will be kicking to the Gators. Redell Anthony, who ran back two kicks for touchdowns last season, including one in the Fiesta Bowl. They also have Terry Jackson back to receive. Jackson is stationed at the 20-yard line. Along with Redell Anthony on the goal line is Jacquez Green. Fifth straight year that Tennessee and Florida have played in rainy conditions. Games have not been all that close. Average margin of victory in the last six, 23 points plus. Jim, you know, you get to a point where all the talking needs to be finished and you just tee it up and kick it off, and here we go. That point is right now. Hogue's kick, a good driving boot, and Anthony will not run it out. Danny Warfel and the Gators will start from the 20. Warfel with an amazing record as a starter in the SEC, 18-1 in his career as a starter in conference game. The only team to beat him was Auburn back in 93. Six touchdown passes last season in the game against Tennessee. In fact, he made his first career start in 93 against the Volunteers and led them to victory, led the Gators to victory. Running play right side with Elijah Williams nearly picking up 10 yards. Yes, give him 10 for a first down out at the 30. Leonard Little helped bump them out of bounds, but not until he gained 10. Williams with that carry, averaging last year seven and a half yards a pop. Evans, the fullback, Hilliard and Anthony, so dangerous. Allen, the tight end from right here in Knoxville. Well, and you can look for Elijah Williams to catch the ball as well as run it. Collins, Kalich, Mitchell, Young, and Pillar, the Florida offensive line. for the second straight home game. There's a little malfunction here with the game clock. It has not started. Jim, Tennessee came out on the first play of the game in a different alignment. They came out with their nickel defense. 
They substituted number 34, Steve Johnson, at cornerback. They took number 44, Craig King, out. Means they're going to try to play four in a spread offense with five defensive backs. Very much the same philosophy that Nebraska used in the Fiesta Bowl. We saw a quick look at Steve Johnson. He has tremendous speed. First down, Florida. Williams carrying again, this time getting the work done up the middle for about eight before he's finally popped by Jason Parker along with Leonard Little. The Tennessee base defense, Terry, you recognize the nickel package, but their base defense with Little, Duff, Barron, and Brown on the line. And you can look for Leonard Little to align in different places today to try to put pressure on Werfel. Wilson, Hines, and King and a strong secondary, Austin, Noel Parker, and Terry Fair, who returned a punt for a touchdown against UCLA of 86 yards. Smokey. There's that Bob. dog I'm yeah. not very fond of, Jim. <laughs> I promise you, they show him right away. Got to tell him why. You know, I'm not very fond of him because the medics, when I was here in 1991 with my UCLA team, we had an offensive lineman dislocate a hip, <laughs> and the Tennessee medics yeah. took better care of the dog who had passed out because <laughs> of the heat than my offensive lineman. At the, <laughs> at the same time. It wasn't this Smokey, right? It was the other one. It wasn't that one. Okay. Huh? It was this Smokey. So again, they've reset the game clock. Second and two for the Gators. And a flag down. Movement on the left side of the line for Florida. One of the things that we'll look for today is this is extreme crowd noise. Already, it's taken a toll on Florida. It's very hard in this kind of an environment when you're an offensive team to try and hear. Offensive linemen have got to watch the we ball the because ball. they can't. Motion on the offense before the snap. Be five yards. They, the down. they can't hear the quarterback signal calling, so they need to watch the ball. The SEC crew headed by Aster Sizemore today. So back them up five. It'll be second down and seven. Elijah Williams getting. The work early and first down and more into the secondary and holding on to bring him down so he wouldn't break it for six is Steve Johnson. 32 yards. What happens to you when you play Florida, you expect that they come out throwing the ball. Instead, Florida has come out attacking on the ground with a sweep play here to the right side of to the uh, field. Boyd at his fullback, Jerome Evans, put out a good block for him. At last, Werfel will throw. Downfield, Anthony open him. Open and he let him too much. So Elijah Williams with three carries for 51 yards and springing that one 32 yards into Tennessee territory. We talked at the start of the telecast that the team that was able to run the ball the best had won the last six games. Here it is, Florida trying to establish the running game right off the bat. You see the Gators last year ran for 203 yards in the victory. From the Volunteers, 34, second and 10. Flags are down. Werfel's toss again in the area of Anthony. Penalty against the Gators. the rest of the crew from the SEC second and 15 Travis McGriff in as a receiver the bottom of your screen crowd really getting fired up but still 10 seconds on the play clock 
the poised Werfel now under center with two on the down clock. Williams back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten. Leonard Little, he'd been playing with a cast on that right hand in the UNLV and UCLA games, but without one today, give him some freedom at last. Well, there's no question that defensive linemen are limited when they can only play with one hand. This is the first time all season that Leonard Little has been able to play with both of his hands. It should help him in the ball game. Third down and ten. Werfel with great time now decides to tuck it under and back to the line of scrimmage. Billy Ratliff. Fourth and ten and the offensive unit is still on the field for Florida. And this driving rain, a 52-yard field goal is apparently going to be bypassed. John Chavis, the defensive coordinator at Tennessee, told us yesterday that whatever he did today against Florida, he wanted to play well in third down situations. Last year, they played very poorly against Florida in third and long. This year, they've made a real conscious effort to improve it, and there was an example of it. I'll give Ratliff the sack, a loss of a yard, fourth and 11. Zone bound and caught for a touchdown. Retail Anthony. Fourth and 11. And Warfel finds Retail Anthony from 35 yards out. One of the things that Florida was concerned about was Tennessee blitzing them when they got down in the scoring zone. Tennessee only had a three-man rush that time. They didn't put heat on Danny Werfel. As a result, he had all day long to throw. He hit Redale Anthony for the touchdown. Bart Edmiston will attempt the extra point. Matt Teague on the hold. 7-0 Gators. They take the opening kick, drive it 80 yards, and connect on fourth down and 11 for a touchdown. Terry, you talked about the tension, the emotion, and Florida takes the opening series 80 yards, scoring on fourth down. What does that do to Tennessee? Well, first of all, since 1990, when Florida has scored first, they're 43-4. and four. That's significant. Secondly, it begins to take this crowd, which is incredible, out of the game. That's what Florida wants to do. And the kick by Teague will be run back by Levine only to the 12. One of the things you have to do is put pressure on Danny Werfel. Tennessee is only going to rush three players. They're going to allow Redell Anthony to run down the middle of the defense as he's wide open. You've got to put more of a pass rush on Werfel. He's got too long to throw that ball. You can't beat Danny Werfel like that. He's too accurate of a passer. Aiden Manning under center. From his own 12-yard line, first snap for Tennessee. Good piece of running there and an open hole for Jay Graham, who hasn't seen many openings in the first two games. Xavier McRae on the hit. Peyton Manning, 20 and 2 as a starter. Last year, 326 yards passing. He led Tennessee to 30 first half points. But then the onslaught by the Gators when they ran off 48 unanswered. Graham stuffed. Stuffed by Reggie McGrew. It'll set up third and about three. Jay Graham last year set the Tennessee season mark. 1,438 yards rushing for Jay Graham. It 
It'll be third and three. Lawrence Wright is out. Shea showers into the secondary for Florida. One play action, Manning across the middle and intercepted. It's Brown with the interception. Zico Brown sets up Florida at the 10 yard line. trying to hit a crossing route and Peyton Manning the ball just gets out of his hands one of the things we talked about was the effect of the weather that's what happens when you have a rain the ball gets slippery you haven't practiced all week with the rain coming down the ball was just a little bit high here he overthrows Nash right there Tico Brown with a critical interception Gators from the 10 Play action, Werfel, end zone, touchdown, touchdown Florida, Terry Jackson. Four minutes and 26 seconds into this game, and Florida with its second touchdown already. Two touchdowns in a minute, 26 seconds. Steve Spurrier is a master at getting the tailback isolated on the linebacker. That's exactly what happened right there. Terry Jackson against Tyrone Hines. That is precisely the difficulty in trying to defense Florida. They get you matched up wrong. Extra point, good. 14 to nothing. Gators. Sometimes a number just belongs to a family. Terry Jackson, number 22, the third member of his family to wear that jersey for the Gators. His father, Willie Sr., played here 1969 through 71. His brother, great receiver here, playing with Jacksonville of the NFL. The thing I like about Terry Jackson, the current player, is that he plays not only running back, but linebacker and special teams as well. Better running room this time for Levine, out to the 23. After the interception by Tico Brown, Florida strikes on T one play. Tennessee will double the Florida tight end, leaving the middle linebacker on Terry Jackson. Anytime Danny Werfel sees that kind of a matchup, he is going to put the ball to the tailback athlete. Terry Jackson lined up at the fullback position, which was unusual. It was a great strategic matchup that Steve Spurrier and his coaches created. They've got Graham lined up at the bottom of your screen as a receiver. Peerless Price in a slot to the left with four receivers in the game. From the 27, Manning will come out of the pocket and pick up about two. Bochamp, who talked a lot this week on the tackle. Tennessee's offense starting today with Graham and Ford in the backfield. The record-breaking receiver here at Tennessee, Joey Kent with Marcus Nash, Dustin Moore, sophomore speedster at tight end. And the line inexperienced, but challenged now. Teague, Robinson, Gibson, Poole, and Rito. Second and nine. Give him a yard on that keeper by Manning. Graham trying to get outside. He'll lose about six. Javon Curse. Freshman from North Fort Myers, Florida, sets up Tennessee with third and long. Bob, that, Bob Stoops, the defensive coordinator at Florida, has come in here with a new defense. He's, it's, it's an attacking defense, one which is built to create turnovers. It's a hard defense to run against because they overplay the run. You're going to have to start throwing the ball to loosen that defense up. Weary, Wright, Brown, and Lott, the best secondary in school history at Florida. A defensive unit that has scored already this season five touchdowns in two games. Manning got away from the sack and gets the first down out at the 41. Peerless Price with the catch for 18 yards.
Peerless Price at the top of the screen. He's the third receiver for Tennessee. They're all very, very fast. He runs a little hook route, but that reception and pass belong to Peyton Manning. Fabulous job by him, avoiding the rush, making a play happen. First down, Graham for about five. What a huge first down, though. So it would, wouldn't be three and out on that possession already down 14. Absolutely. The strategy now for Phil Fulmer. He has a buildup all week long to this game. All of a sudden, his team is down 14 to nothing. Now what he needs to do is just settle everyone down. It's still a long game. You don't win or lose the game generally in the first quarter. You're going to play long time this afternoon. He just needs to keep his team composed. They have a good plan, and he's going to go ahead and execute that plan. A big drive here would get him right back, feeling good about things, and get everybody settled in. Well, there was an offside penalty on that play against Florida. Only five coaches have beaten Philip Fulmer. Spurrier three times. There's Terry Donahue of UCLA. The 95 opener. Bruins won out at the Rose Bowl. First and five with the penalty against the Gators. And all the way out to the 50, it's Graham again. Near the first down yardage. He's trying to rebound from last year's performance against the Gators. He really felt personally that he had contributed tremendously to the loss to Florida. He fumbled twice, didn't feel like he played a good football game. Talking to him this week, you could see there was a special desire in his eyes and in his heart. He wants to play well here today. He picked up the first down with that last carry. 49-yard line of Florida. Going down at the 42-yard line. Ed Chester, sophomore from Spring Hill, Florida, backs up the Volunteers about nine. Well, Ed Chester is the best defensive lineman at the University of Florida. He just makes an inside move and just will not give up on his pressure on the quarterback. Peyton Manning needs to avoid that rush. He was too stiff in the pocket that time. The previous couple plays ago, he did a great job avoiding. He didn't do it that time. Second and 19, Greg Kyler has come in as a receiver, number 80. Straight drop back, right side, open room. Graham back into Florida territory at the 46. Set up third and about seven. Player down on the field. Tennessee. It's going to be one of the linemen and the volunteers. Inexperienced, as we said earlier, on that uh, offensive front. They can ill afford to lose an offensive lineman at this time. Their line has been under real scrutiny. Four new starters this year did not play particularly well a week ago against UCLA. Only rushed the ball for 69 yards. We'll be right back. Time out on the field. Florida 14, Tennessee nothing. Jim, you can see the big right tackle, Jarvis Rito, number 72, watch his right leg. The ankle gets rolled up here late in the run. Right there, you can watch his right leg right there. Mm. Looks like a severe injury. They've brought the cart out. Boy, things so far for Tennessee have been rough. Florida comes out and explodes offensively with 14 quick unanswered points. Now you're starting right tackle goes down this is where this is where the real character of the Tennessee team and the coaching staff has to gather themselves and and stay right in this game mentally it's going to be a tough afternoon Chad Clifton you saw him 67 he has already come into the huddle to replace Rito who was uh, really some story the courageous effort he put forth just to be on 
the team this season had surgery in August to correct in a regular heartbeat yeah, it just wasn't surgery heart surgery and, and got back in two a days and uh, the players are extremely fond of Jarvis Rito and everybody was talking about the speedy recovery he made from the heart surgery the thing that you have to do right now because there's such a lull in the game once everything gets cleared up you've got to get that intensity level back in your team you cannot let your team go into a trance you can't let them be shocked by the by the ill turn of events right here you've got to keep your team in it mentally all right we'll check on Rito's condition in a moment they brought a cart out of the field and we'll be right back the Jarvis Rito uh, now about to be taken to the locker room. <laughs> Nothing but gloom here at Neyland Stadium early in the game. Well, there's no question this is a difficult, difficult start for Tennessee, but the question is now, how do you get your players to respond? How do you get the fans back in the game? You do it by executing. You do it now by putting everything out of your mind. Get back into the fight. Get yourself going. It's a, sh it's a shame that Jarvis Rito has gone down, but you cannot let that affect you. You've prepared all week for this championship game. Uh, early in the season, it's a championship game. That's the way it is, and you've got to respond now, even though things have gone poorly. Let's go down for the report from Michelle. Michelle? Well, Rito has a problem with his right ankle. They are trying to rule out a fractured fibula. They've taken him in for x-rays, Jim. We'll get back to you when we know for sure. Okay, third and seven. Back to the action. And Manning passed. He had an open man. Kyler, the defender, had slipped. So, well, flag is uh, in the area of where that pass, well, where Manning threw the pass could indicate a holding call. If they refuse it, it'll be fourth and seven. There's holding on the offense. They refuse the fourth down. Larry Binion has come in to punt the football for Tennessee. And Redell Anthony, who scored the game's first touchdown, He suddenly is uh, racing to the sideline. And uh, they cross him up. The Volunteers slip the punter back to the sideline. Peyton Manning's under center on fourth and seven. A gamble. Manning fires. Caught and then popped loose incomplete. Florida will take over near midfield. Tico Brown with a jarring blow that knocked it loose. Well, one of the things that you got to give Florida credit, they came on the blitz. They're playing bump to bump man coverage right there. And what a hit by Tico Brown. What a gamble. Florida takes over at its own 47. Phil Fulmer said he was going to play loose. That's playing loose. Jackson for about a yard. Billy Ratliff clogging in the middle that time. Well, they brought the punt unit onto the field. Next thing you know, they make a quick switch. Well, I think they tried to get Florida to substitute their punt return team. Florida saw what happened, got their normal defense on, and then called a blitz against the, the play that, that Manning had called. Second down and nine. Jackson to the 45. Tyrone Hines with the hit. It'll be third and short. A long yard to go. Maybe two. Five thirty-seven to go. First quarter already. Fourteen nothing Florida. Two tight ends into the game. We'll call it third and two. 
Jackson, good hit. Was the knee down? If they rule him down, the side they judge, do. The side judge said he was down. If not, he would have had the first. Raymond Austin gets credit for the slicing hit. So it'll be fourth and uh, about two again for Florida. Raymond Austin, number 28, is playing a different position this week than he has the first two weeks of the season. He's a natural strong safety who's played corner. Florida's coming right back and going for it. Wow, Spurrier is oh, a wow. wild man. <laughs> Fourth and three. Sweep. They got the first down. Terry Jackson to the 41. You know, Steve Spurrier is different than anybody I've ever been around. This guy is incredibly confident. He coaches offensively, never out of fear. He coaches with total confidence. And, you know, he doesn't get a lot of information from the press box. He does most of the call, play calling on his own. He, call, he, he calls it by instinct. He feels and senses the game. He is amazing. His team with a first down at the 41. There's nobody like him, Jim. There's nobody like him. Ten on the play clock. Plenty of time. Worf will well aware of it. Staying on the ground. Good yardage to the 34. A run of about seven. So twice... They've gone for it on fourth down, the first time striking for a touchdown from 35 yards out. And this one to move the chains into Tennessee territory even deeper. There's a whole lot of coaches in the country active today and in press boxes like myself that would never have done the things that Steve Spear have already done in this game. Three receivers into the game. Jacquez Green joins the starters. It's second down and three flags down. Play rule dead. And the word from the Tennessee locker room now confirms fractured right leg mm. for Jarvis Rito. One of the things that Tennessee has to consider at this time, Florida has been able to run at will against that nickel package. That particular defensive alignment is not holding up well against the run. Florida really is not throwing the ball all that much. They've thrown for a touchdown pass, two touchdown passes, but they've move the ball on the ground. Tennessee has to consider the possibility of moving back to their base normal defense and away from the nickel if they can't play against the run any better. Second down and eight. Warple timeout. Timeout with two on the play clock. So Florida up 14 and looking for more in the first quarter. Back at Neyland Stadium, the update on Tennessee offensive lineman Jarvis Rito is that he does, in fact, have a broken right ankle. He's been taken to St. Mary's Hospital for surgery. From the time he went down to the time he was in the ambulance, he never let go of his face mask, guys. So sorry to see that. Second down and eight in Florida. Looking for the end zone again. Anthony's there, and it's knocked away. Parker converged on him at the last moment, along with Steve Johnson. It looked like six for just a second. It looked for a moment like Danny Werfel would put Florida back on the scoreboard, but right there, Jason Parker comes over and he puts a heck on a, a heck of a hit on that guy and knocks the ball loose. Redale Anthony just couldn't hold him. That was the same pattern that yielded the game's opening touchdown. Third and eight. Hines came in on Werfel, tries to get him again, and they do back at the 45. That's what Tennessee has to do right there, Jim. If they want to stop Danny Werfel in Florida, they have got to put that kind of pressure on him. Hines got there first. Little finished him off. And now Robbie Stevenson and the punt unit comes in for Florida. Second sack of the quarter for the Volunteers. This sack has gotten the crowd back into this game. Tyrone Hines on the blitz, gets cut, gives it great second effort, and then Leonard Little finishes him off. That is the kind of pressure that Tennessee must put on. Robbie Stevenson, sophomore punter to Terry Fair. 
We ran one back last week, 86 yards against UCLA. Oh, what a well-executed boot. Down inside of the five. Next Saturday, college football action continues here on CBS. Regional coverage. Most of you will see Virginia Tech against Syracuse. The Hokies with the second longest win streak in the nation. Some will see Kentucky against Florida from down in Gainesville. That's next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time right here on CBS. Two tight ends, Dustin Moore, John Sartell. They say the ball was first touched at the six. So that's where they start this series. Diving for about a yard, it's Graham. Now Florida brings in a new defensive coordinator, Bob Stoops. Well, Bob Stoops, the reason he was hired by Steve Spurrier was the fact that his defense only averaged four and a half snaps per drive. That means Spurrier gets the ball back quicker. He gets more offensive plays that way. He loves that. That's when Stoops was at Kansas State a year ago. Now the defensive coordinator for Florida has that average at 4.6. Graham, again, only a yard. Well, Bob Stoops was uh, in his office when Steve Spurrier called him, and, and Steve said, Bob, this is Steve Spurrier, and, and Bob thought he was kidding. He said, hey, who is this? What, which one of my buddies is playing a trick? And they started talking about the job, and Bob initially wasn't very interested because he liked Manhattan, Kansas, and liked working for Bill Snyder, and they had led the country in defense last year at Kansas State. And the center for Tennessee, Brent Gibson, shaken up on that play. Second offensive lineman now. Well, they have to head to the sidelines, and the Rito injury uh, looks to be, of course, a season-ending injury. And that, that injury right there, Brent Gibson, that is the leader of the offensive line at Tennessee. He's the guy that organized the players throughout the summer to work and get ready for this particular game. Let's watch the exchange on this slippery field. Dyron Robinson, the left guard now, takes over at center on third and eight. Play action, pass caught, caught by Eric Lane, but well short of the first. Anthone Lott bumped him out, and Tennessee will punt from its own goal line. Larry Pinion must be careful here. He had punts blocked in the last two games a year ago. Good, good kick. That's Anthony all the way back to the 32. Looking for some freedom. Won't get it down at the 40. Chester Ford got to him first. This, the Eastern Division in Florida, Tennessee, both playing in that same division. That's why this game's so critical. You lose today, you got to watch the winner of this game lose twice to make your way back to the championship game of the SEC, which is very unlikely. And that's why the pressure today is so great. You, you expect that kind of pressure at the end of the season, not early in the yeah, season like September that. September 21st. That's what makes it so hard on the coaches and the players. 29 seconds to go, first quarter. Werfel in the pocket. Now release. And almost intercepted then. Caught, but they say out of bounds. Caught by Jacquez Green. Parker had it. Had the pick for a moment. Werfel has not thrown an interception this season. Well, right here we see Jason Parker with a tremendous play on the ball. He had that ball. He's going to think about that tonight. That would have been a huge interception for him. He was in man-to-man -man coverage, did an outstanding job getting that receiver covered down. Green did a good job of making sure he did not get the pick. Second down to 10. Across the middle, and the ball caught. What a nice balancing act there by Jacquez Green. First down at the Tennessee 39. 21 yards on that play.
Danny Werfel is an incredibly accurate thrower. This ball is high, and he is saved by Jack Wes Green. What a reception, a spectacular catch. Whoa. And that's uh, one play after Green had knocked it out of Parker's hands for the interception, which was an acrobatic play also. And that's the end of the first quarter with the score, Florida 14, Tennessee nothing. We'll return to Neyland Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. With Terry Donahue, Michelle Tafoya, Neyland Stadium as we start the second quarter. Florida leading 14-0, scoring two touchdowns in the game's opening four and a half minutes. Gators first down from the Volunteer 40. Jim, that first quarter belonged all to Florida, obviously, but a couple key statistics. Rushing the ball, Florida rushed for 68 yards. Tennessee had a total one yard rushing. That includes sacks, of course. And total yardage, Florida 134 yards, Tennessee just 31. We had illegal motion by the offensive lineman prior to the snap, be five yards, repeat to Dan. The quarterbacks in the opening quarter, Werfel was three out of six, as was Manning, but 66 yards and two touchdowns, giving him eight touchdown tosses against Tennessee in the last five quarters. First and 15. Elijah Williams, Jonathan Brown grabs him after a gain of maybe a yard. Maybe not. Ronnie Pillow came in on the hit also. You know, sometimes you get in huge games like this and the momentum shifts go one way or the other. Remember last year, Tennessee took mm. a big early lead on Florida and then the roof fell in. That was 30 to 14 in the second quarter. Tennessee, in fact, twice led by 16 in the first half, only to watch Florida score 48 unanswered and win 62 to 37. Werfel and open. It's caught at the 21 yard line by Anthony. 23 yards on that pass play. Raymond Austin on the coverage. Florida got uh, Tennessee in man-to-man -man coverage, and Raymond Austin just could not cover Redell Anthony. Tennessee coaches have tried to protect uh, Raymond Austin. He's not a natural cover man. He's more of a run support player, and they, they need to protect him. When he gets isolated like that, it's trouble. First down, Carey Williams breaking two tackles and getting to the 16. Leonard Little held on to him after a run of about five. Williams rushing in this game, six carries, 61 yards. This was a nice hard run. Look at, look at Danny Werfel here. You can't hear because of the crowd noise, but he's whispering to his lineman. Florida practices this when they go into a foreign stadium they whisper instead of using crowd noise. Second and five. Up the middle, Williams, ridden down at the 14 by Ron Green. So Florida in the scoring zone now, inside the 20. And so far on the season, eight touchdowns, two field goals. Well, particularly the touchdowns, if you look at those stats, Jim, the key there, they're not kicking field goals. They're going for all of it. Third down, third and three. Dwayne Mobley comes into the backfield. Lined up as the fullback out of the eye. Pitch, Williams outside. Near the first down marker, Hines tried to stop him short. Might need a measurement. Looks like the spot will give him the first. You don't go into a game like this expecting to defend the option play. Here it is, a critical play like that, and Steve Spurrier pulls one of his plays out of his playbook, the option. You just don't expect it. He's the master of the unexpected. So first down, Florida, just outside the 10-yard line. Off the pitch, Williams. 
Long developing four yard carry. Jonathan Brown eventually got him. Remember at the top of the telecast, we talked about the offensive line and the defensive line play. Those would control the tempo of the game. Right now, Florida's offensive line is clearly controlling the tempo of this game. McGriff into the game. Second down and five. Loaded up with three receivers on the right. Seven on the play clock. Looks left side. Caught touchdown. Ike Hilliard. Overloaded the right side. Crossed him up and found an open Hilliard in the end zone. What Steve Spurrier did was he spread out his offense. Ike Hilliard got isolated on Terry Fair, man to man, and he ran a simple inside slant route. It's hard to defend when you're in man to man, those inside cuts like that. That was his strategy as much as execution. Hilliard caught four touchdowns against the Volunteers last year. Werfel with his third touchdown pass of this game, and a nice job by Matt T getting the uh, snap down. And Edmiston converts 21 to nothing Gators and will return to Neyland Stadium after this word from your local station. <laughs> 21 nothing not uh, sun drenched but a stun drenched crowd here <laughs> at Neyland Stadium as Florida leads 21 nothing on three Werfel touchdown passes Levine from the two. Gallops to the 26-yard line. Well, here you see it from the quarterback's eyes right here, and the quarterback's got to be willing to take a hit, which he did right there. He doesn't mind that little hit when he's throwing a touchdown pass to Ike Hilliard. He got that quick glance to the left, knew that Hilliard had the inside position. And Florida already with 178 yards total offense to 31 for Tennessee. Manning. Joey Kent he stepped out of bounds at the 42. 16 yards. They'll mark it back at the 42. Joey Kent, who's caught more passes than any player in Tennessee history. Well, and the thing is, Jim, this is the first time Joey Kent's touched the ball, and we're into the second quarter. One of the things you have to do is get the ball in your best player's hands, and that's what Tennessee is doing right here. They tried to go to him on that uh, gambling fourth down play, but the ball did. was jarred loose by Tico Brown. He didn't hang on to it. Brent Gibson back in at center. First down. Graham to the 48 for Florida. Late flag. Bring that one back. That's a tough that's a tough call on Tennessee. You start getting a little momentum. You need to get your team back in this game and all of a sudden you get one of those doggone holding penalties. Tell you something hard to believe you take this home field advantage that Tennessee is supposed to enjoy. They're holding on the offense, be a 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. You go back to the 94 game, which was played here in a driving rainstorm. Florida won that one 31 nothing. The Gators have come in here the last two times and have outscored Tennessee 52 to nothing in the last five quarters here. They're the only ones in the country that have been able to do that. Everyone else comes in here and is affected by the home field crowd, but not Steve Spurrier and his staff and players. So first and 14, marking off the penalty from the point of the infraction. Pressure and almost picked off. In fact, it is caught, intercepted by Florida. James Bates. What a sweet pick it is for James Bates, who grew up right here in the Tennessee area. Brother played last year for the Volunteers at quarterback as a backup. 
Tennessee is trying to set up a little screen pass here, and the ball's batted at the line of scrimmage. It's not by the initial rusher. Right there, hits a lineman in the leg. What an interception by Bates. It is storming in Knoxville. Florida, 21-0. To the Bates interception, Florida set up again in Tennessee territory at the 30. Werfel. Elijah Williams back there, and they throw the flag. They throw the flag against Tennessee and Al Wilson. Some here thought that would be offensive interference, but it's going against the Vols. Well, you see right here Al Wilson on man-to-man -man coverage against Elijah Williams. That does not look to me like interference. You, you've got to let people play defense. He was doing nothing but playing defense. That is a very poor call against Tennessee. Let's take another look, see if... He's got his arm out there a little bit, but right there, he gets hooked as well as the other guy. To me, you got to let people go ahead and play the game. I don't see that. College football, not from the point of the interference, but a 15-yard step off from the line of scrimmage, setting up the Gators now at the 15. Whirlpool looking for more. Flag down. Pass caught. Touchdown. Jacquez Green, but there is a flag. Think. Penalty against Tennessee. They lined up offsides, Jim. Touchdown, Florida. Right now, Tennessee just cannot cover the Florida receivers. Jacquez Green gets off the bump and run coverage with ease. Werfel puts the ball where he always puts it, right on the target, and they got another touchdown, 28 points. And 11 minutes remain in the first half. That makes it 28. Werfel with four touchdown passes. Sure. To four different receivers. One to Anthony, one to Jackson, one to Hilliard, one to Green. You're going to see right here at the top of the screen, you're going to see Jaquez Green isolated one-on-one -on -one against the bump coverage. He just gets off the line of scrimmage clean right there. Werfel's already laid the ball up. There's plenty of room on the sideline to let the receiver run underneath the ball. Tremendous design by Florida in the throwing game. Philip Fulmer cannot believe it. I can't believe it either. I think there are about 107,000 people here who can't believe it. Tennessee seems so geared up, so ready to play this game. The coaches, the, the city, the state, everyone was so ready for this game and to have this kind of an explosion. They called it the biggest sporting event in Tennessee history, state history. Nice little comeback, too, by Jacquez Green. When we last saw him at the Fiesta Bowl, Terry, he suffered a dislocated hip on a kickoff return in the second quarter against the Cornhuskers. Unbelievable hit right there, and he made a, a very speedy recovery from that injury. Uh, Steve Spurrier was telling us at practice the other day that he was shocked how quickly he came back from that. In fact, he was back for spring ball and playing today with a hamstring pull. I'd hate to see him healthy if he's playing with a hamstring pull. And the run back out to the 22 by Derek Edmonds, freshman from Tampa, Florida. Tennessee, all of last year, an astonishing low total of turnovers, 10 on the year, and already with six this year. And furthermore, Peyton Manning has, with two interceptions today, thrown four on the season. That's the grand total last year in 380 attempts. You have to wonder how much of that is a result of all the pressure that's on that young player. All the Heisman talk, 
all the stuff about a national championship. He's under great pressure. And pressure, too, coming from the defense <laughs> with the inexperienced offensive line that has suffered one casualty already today. In fact, they're in on Manning again. Somehow he gets away for just a moment, and it's Bates bringing him down. Peyton Manning is trying to change the play at the line of scrimmage. He's audibilizing with hand signals right here. The problem, Joey Kent, the wide receiver, didn't get the proper hand signal and didn't run the route that Manning expected him to do. Manning did a good thing. He pulled the ball down, tried to fight it back to the line of scrimmage. And he got there, second and 10. Left side, Graham. Ball free, caught in midair by Anton Lott. Lott to the end zone for another touchdown. Can you believe it? Johnny Rutledge right here against Jay Graham. You can see the ball's a little bit loose. Right there, it goes up in the air, and Anthon Lott Makes the, makes the reception and takes it in for the score. The sixth touchdown scored by the Florida defense this season in 10 quarters. Last year, they scored one defensive touchdown all year long. You got to say that Bob Stoops has brought something new to Florida that they haven't had before. Five touchdowns in the game's first 20 minutes. And Thon Lott returning the fumble, 27 yards, 35 to nothing, Florida in a Tennessee waltz. Johnny Rutledge with the hit, the impact, causing the fumble, caught in midair by Lott, went back for a touchdown. Smokey's looking for the house. Levine from the five. There's another fumble. That ball came loose. And they're saying Tennessee was down. Back judge already awarding the football and the possession. Stays with Tennessee. They have given the signal that it's Tennessee football. And let's check in with Michelle. All right, Jim, well, after that last touchdown, Tennessee head coach Phil Fulmer walked around to each of his players, giving them each a slap on the back and saying, that's all right, guys. Let's get right back in there and give it to them. Stay cool. Let's see how they handle this now. Ten minutes to go, second quarter. Dayton, play action. Long ball, man there, Price caught, touchdown! Give it to him, touchdown, Tennessee! <laughs> 72 yards to Peerless Price. Indicating they're going to go for two. Peerless Price right here at the top of the screen. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one against that bump coverage. He gets off clean. And we lost him there on the replay, but he's there on a post route, a little play-action pass. They faked the run. The linebackers came up. He ran a post on the defensive back. Pure one-on-one -on -one coverage got open. Got a little excitement back in the stadium. We just said, let's see how they handle 35 nothing in one play a touchdown to price now going for two Manning rolling out looking looking firing price had it for a second then knocked loose what a hit by Lawrence Wright thirty five to six 
Peyton Manning just became the all-time touchdown passer at Tennessee. He was tied with Heath Schuler and Andy Kelly, 36 coming into the game. That's his 37th strike. And he also moved up the uh, SEC all-time list for touchdown passes, moving past Steve Spurrier. You, you can be sure that he wished he would have thrown that record-breaking touchdown pass in a little bit different environment than this particular one. But you, you got a long road to you got a long road to travel right here, and, and every little bit will help get you back into the game. Here we see great concentration by Peerless Price on the ball, and it's a it's a fabulous throw by Manning. He just dropped it right in there. One look back, no one near him. And Price gives Tennessee something to smile about for once. Hope to kick to Anthony and Green. Press Green from the goal line. Good hit. A lick put on him by Westmoreland. Eric Westmoreland, freshman from Marion City, Tennessee. You never know what can spark a football team. Sometimes it's a touchdown. Sometimes it's a big defensive hit on a kickoff like that. All of a sudden, players get adrenaline going. They start jumping around. Who knows what's going to happen? I do know this. Tennessee has got to tighten down defensively. They better check out whether or not they can play the style of defense they're trying to play against Florida. Only a two-yard run by Williams. Now they're primed. Still a long road. Coming up at halftime, join Pat, Craig, and Danny with scores and highlights and commentary on this full day of college football. College football today coming up from New York. Second and 10. They gave him no gain with that carry. Got Warfel before he pitched it. And now written down for a loss by Tory Noel. Tyrone Hines was in on the quarterback so quickly. He blitzed. He came right. Tyrone Hines comes right up the middle of the Florida offense. He almost gets Werfel the quarterback. It allows Tory Noel to come off and make the play here. Loss of three. Third and 13. Over 100,000 spurred to a frenzy for the first time, wanting the football back. Off his back foot, Warfel throws incomplete. Diving attempt by Anthony Tennessee will, in fact, get the football back. Crowd starting to get back into this game a little bit. Everybody's been shell shocked. I, yeah. I've been shocked myself. I mean, I never expected anything like this. But all of a sudden, the crowd's starting to get back in. Tennessee's getting a little fire underneath them. Terry Fair at his own 45. Hardy returns this year of 86 for a touchdown and 51 yards. Stevenson. Low driving boot, Fair will run it. It's by the first wave, up the middle, there is a flag down, it's coming back. Dwayne Thomas brought him down. Looked like blocking in the back by Tennessee. 40 yard punt, 13 yard run back. The touchdown to Price broke the streak of 66 unanswered points by Florida here at Neyland Stadium going back to 1994. And I'm telling you, I'm glad they finally broke it. I was getting nervous there. You know, you have to ask the question, 
the way Florida came back. We had a defensive man within two yards of the receiver. Refused the penalty. That was not a blocking infraction. No, it wasn't. Didn't give him enough space. Didn't give him enough room. Good call by the official. That, that was a correct call. Did he have enough room? Well, right there, it looks to me like he has enough room. It's a two-yard rule. It's hard to judge, but it looked to me like, like he had enough room to feel that ball. So the Volunteers, great field position, 42-yard line. Graham. Straight ahead for a yard is all. Florida, Florida coming back like they did a year ago. You've got to wonder, can Tennessee mount that same firepower? That was 16, and this one was 35. <laughs> Yeah, but remember this. That was it. That was down in Florida. This one's in Tennessee. Jermaine Copeland has come in for Tennessee. There he is at quarterback, Copeland. Mouthpiece comes a flying, and he is knocked back for a loss. Copeland had Manning lined up at tailback, so a little trickery that uh, goes awry here for Tennessee. A little razzle-dazzle here by Tennessee, trying to make something happen. What do you think they were going to do if that was open out there? Well, Copeland's an outstanding runner. He's got speed of a tailback. He, he, can, put a, he can put a big play on you with the ball. It was a naked bootleg. They came out trying to draw the defensive end down on the sweep fake. So from tailback, the return to quarterback, Manning under center, third, 13. Ball stripped loose. And recovered by the Gators. Bochamp with the recovery. He was the one who was doing some talking this week. He's backing it up right now, he and so is. are those other Gators. He did a lot of talking, and sometimes that backfires on you. But in this particular case, they backed every, every word of it up. The problem that Tennessee has right now, they just are not playing well enough in the offensive line to hold off that Florida onslaught. They just can't hold up. Losing Rideau, that hurts them. Gibson's in and out of the game. That's difficult on any offensive line. Four Tennessee turnovers in the first quarter and a half. Take the end around. Werfel left side and beautiful over the shoulder catch. Caught by Jackson, but out of bounds. They rule the catch was out of bounds. Did not get a foot down. This is Peyton Manning in the pocket, and one of the things that happened to him, it was a coverage sack. He's got the ball tucked away in pretty good fashion right here, but he just gets stripped. Every defensive coach particularly Bob Stoops in Florida, they try to strip the ball from those, those offenders. That's exactly what happened right there. Just got it punched out. Happens every Saturday. It was Ed Chester who punched it out of there. The Bochamp recovery. Second and 10. Everybody clearing out of the backfield. Five receivers lined up. Werfel's pass almost intercepted. He had Green on the quick slant, and Noel stepped in and almost made the pick. And let's go back down to the sideline to Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? Well, Steve Spurrier was very upset with sophomore Tim Bochamp early in the week because of some of the comments that he made. Bochamp was saying things like, you know, I'd rather play against Peyton Manning any time than Danny Werfel. Peyton Manning tends to get rattled. He gets shaky feet. Right now, Tim Bochamp is doing exactly what Steve Spurrier told me he wanted him to do, and that is backing up his mouth. Jim. Did you see that wall? I mean, it looked like it had been wallpapered with quotes. You know, sometimes that infuriates a team. Other times it psychs them out. Florida, Florida has backed up everything they've said. Mm. Third and ten, and they don't beat the down clock. Delay of game will step them back five. Yeah, the way Florida's playing right now, the, the, the Gators this week didn't give themselves enough credit. <laughs> <laughs> There's some truth to that. Yeah, really. They're being a little Five modest. Seconds. Thoughts will still be turned down. I really expected Tennessee 
to be right in the heart of this game. I thought that Florida would move the ball, but I never expected this kind of an offensive explosion. Tennessee has outstanding speed on defense, and right now they just are mismatched, so Florida must have incredible speed. Five receivers in, including freshman Jamie Richardson. Werfel, he needs 15 for the first, not close, back to midfield. Tyrone Hines with a tackle at the 50. And punting time for the Gators. I'm kind of surprised Steve Spurrier's punting. You know, normally, <laughs> fourth and 15, he might go for it. Yeah, well, you never know. And he hasn't punted yet. Could always snap it to the up back. <laughs> it was Terry Jackson, by the way. Robbie Stevenson. He's the punter, fair to return. A low knuckle ball, fair fumbles. The ball's on it at the 11. Fred Weary down there in a hurry. 35 to 6 in this one. A reminder next week Virginia Tech. How about that win streak, Terry? Second longest in the country. They've done a great job, Virginia Tech. They're going to be very, very difficult for Syracuse to beat. Virginia Tech with 13 straight wins after today. Some will see Kentucky against Florida. That's next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time here on CBS. Terry, I look forward to being with you at the Carrier Dome for the Q's and the Hokies. Andy McCullough in as a receiver for Tennessee. And a pass caught by Nash and ridden out at the 25 by Shea Showers and Fred Weary. 14-yard pass. What you were saying at the start about playing off the Fiesta Bowl, Florida trying to rebound from that, Tennessee trying to utilize and employ the Nebraska game plan. Right now, it's clear that Florida learned a lot more from that game plan than Tennessee did. They have solved that defensive problem. Manning. Ooh, Kent was there. He had a step on Lawrence Wright. The pressure on the quarterback by Mike Moten and Keith Council. Tim Bochamp talked about Peyton Manning's feet in the pocket. Right here, he's got a tremendous amount of pressure on him, a lot of heat, and that's what happens. You tend not to get your feet set. You tend not to be able to plant and really throw. And being off balance, that's why he missed Kent with that pass. And the ball wasn't much off, but it was off. Richie Schuler in, second down pass play. There's Kent, right over Lawrence Wright. And at the Florida 41, they gain 33 yards. Joey Kent, the best receiver in Tennessee history, has good concentration on the ball. He goes up, gets it right there. The thing about Joey Kent, you want to get the ball in his hands. He has proven he can make plays. He can move the chains, get the ball in his hands. He just became the all-time pass yardage, pass reception yardage leader in Tennessee history, moving past Tim McGee. Copeland come in as a receiver now. And there's the little pass to Nash for nine. They showers on the coverage. They wanted a late hit over there, but no flag. Joey Kent now has all the reception, receiving records at Tennessee. Touchdown catches, catches, pass receiving yardage. We've seen him three times this year. He's been impressive three times yeah. this year. He set a record in every game. Yeah, every game he broke a record or set a new one. And, you know, they regard it here as wide receiver U. They've had some big time receivers from Carl Pickens. We saw Tim McGee on and on. Willie Galt, Stanley Morgan. Ahead lane for the first down, but a flag down also. I like Joey Kent because he's so fearless over the middle. A lot of receivers catch the ball deep. They can run outside routes. 
The thing I like about this guy is he'll, he, he'll go inside and catch the ball. He's, he's got real courage. So scratch that first down dive by Lane. We have movement before the snap on the offense. Be five yard penalty. Repeat the second down. It has stopped raining here. And their forecast, in fact, said that uh, could see clearing for the second half, and it's uh, already started to clear a bit. Could be more showers, though. Who knows? Second and six. Manning fires in traffic. Hits his target, Kyler, for the first down. And another flag falls. They gain 13, but they wait on the flag. Fred Weary is uh, a little groggy, limping to the Florida sideline, replaced by Shea Showers. One of the things that the score of the game has caused Tennessee to do. We have defensive pass interference. The play game more than the penalty was first down by the offense. Tennessee's been forced out of their game plan. They wanted to be a balanced attack today. They really want to run the ball as well as throw it. Behind this far, they've got to go ahead and throw the ball. They've had three yards rushing thus far today. They're so far behind, they're out of their game plan. They've got to just keep throwing the ball and trying to get back in. So three yards running, 176 yards passing. The first down. Four minutes remaining in the half. Down 35 to six. Setting up the screen to Kent. Lock is there with him and swings him down just inside the 20. This is an excellent play by Florida's defense. They're in man-to-man -man coverage. Joey Kent comes over. They're going to throw him a little screen. Tennessee is an outstanding screen team. Throws it on you every week. But right here, the Florida defense scrambles. Anthone Lott comes underneath the block, makes a, a very, very good play. He is a solid corner, already with a fumble return for a touchdown in this half. That's why he's all first string SEC. Unanimous. Plays last like year. there. 10 5, open man. It's Graham inside the 10, first and goal for Tennessee. Another flag down, though, in the backfield. Holding Tennessee. Jim, the right guard, Robert Poole, had a takedown. It's a good call. You can, you can watch the right guard here. There's no question about this call. You can see him right there on your screen. He comes off the block right here, and he's going to take him down right there. Good call by the official. Yeah, he pinned Bates. So that nullifies the first and goal to go situation. Sometimes when it goes bad, it just keeps going bad, but I am holding on the offense. The 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. I, I admire Tennessee's grit. I don't. I don't think the Tennessee players or coaches have quit in this football game despite the score. Everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong, but they're still fighting to get back into this game. Now, they've got a long road to hoe. I understand that, but I like the way they're playing. They're going after it now. They seem like, hey, they're turning it looser right now. Now, that'll be second and 21. Instead of being at the 6, ball's at the 35. That's a big holding call against him. Four receiver formation. Looks left, throws right. McCullough should have had it. Should have had it for the touchdown. He had a step on Anthone Lott. If you're going to beat Florida, You've got to be able to make plays like this. Andy McCullough did an excellent job getting off the line of scrimmage against Anthon Lott. This ball has got to be caught. It's a little bit long, but you've got to make that play. Right here. Mm. 
Oh, hang on, baby. Hang on. Twice, and it still tried to hang on to the shoulder. So third and 21. Manning shoots the defender, goes long, and intercepted but out of bounds by Showers. There is a flag after that football was released. I think we're going to have a roughing the quarterback call that will be an automatic first down. Tim Bochamp. Guess who? Yep. Right here, the ball's released. They're going, ooh, they're going to protect. That's the guy I feel sorry for yeah. right there. He's the one that took the hit on the sideline. Yeah, really? Manning has a helmet on. That poor guy doesn't have a hat on. You know, they're going to protect the quarterback in college football. It's a good rule. That was, that was a personal foul. Late hit on the quarterback against the defense. Be 15 yards, automatic first down. How about Ohio State 72 to nothing after putting a 70 on Rice? Boy, John Cooper's got it going again this year. Orlando Pace, that's one reason. They're in the low 70s more often than Tiger Woods <laughs> these days. Of course, he's in the mid 60s. Washington leading Arizona third quarter. 21 10. How about the Pac 10 this year, Terry? Well, there's a big game out there this afternoon with Arizona State, Nebraska, and the Pac 10, as always, with USC, Washington. Arizona State, UCLA, those teams are all going to be tough out there. Oregon's had a great start to the season. Even with injuries at key positions. All right, here first down. From the 20, Manning's got the one-on-one -on -one coverage, looking for Kent, and Lott, no call. Yes, there it is, late flag. Like the arms got tangled there, Terry. Well, who knows? I guess it depends on, on, on your viewpoint. Right here, there's a lot of hand checking, but right there you see Anton Lott with his hand on him too long. I think that's a good call by the official. I like to let defensive people play. I think they should play, but that was a little bit too long with his hands on him. The judge on the right on the sideline, though, he didn't see that hand. He called it. He didn't make the call. It was on the defense. The 15 yard penalty on that first down. It was a back judge who came over from the side that made that call. The side judge really didn't see it the same way as the back judge. I guess that's why you got seven of those guys out there. Wow, you need them too in a, in a high speed game like this. Ball at the five yard line. First and goal. Copeland's in the game. So is Manning. Anytime they bring Copeland into that lineup, you have to beware. And he's uh, lined up at the bottom of your screen. Now sent in motion. The rollout, Manning fires. Caught. Touchdown, Tennessee. Marcus Nash. They say out of bounds. Did not have the foot down. Right here, you have to have two feet come down in bounds. Good call by the official. Clearly out of bounds. I mean, I'm a one one foot. I'm sorry, one foot in bounds. He was out of bounds, though. He was clearly what out. What happened bounds. was the back foot. The back foot was out of bounds. Did it touch the turf first? Well, I think the foot touched out of bounds. Let's see which foot hits first. I think it's a one out of bounds right there. That's what I think. I think the guy, Johnny on the spot, made a good call. So close, second and goal, Manning this time. Oh, Moore should have had it. Dustin Moore, Lawrence Wright stripped it. This tight end, so promising uh, with speed and all kinds of potential. He dropped a touchdown in the season opener against UNLV. He had a fumble against UCLA and uh, really could have held on to this one. Right here, he's got it in his hands. Again, I go back. To become the champion, you've got to make those kinds of plays. Too many times today, Tennessee hasn't come up with a big play when they had an opportunity. Four receivers 
from the five-yard line, third and goal. Forty to go in the half. Manning looking, looking in zone and off the hands of Nash. Shea showers on the coverage. They'll have to go for it on fourth down. Well, a chance to score back-to-back -back touchdowns to have any chance. One good thing about this drive, in addition to possible points, you've kept the Florida offense off the field. Fourth and goal. Stepping in and oh picked off. Look out. Oh, my. And knocked out of bounds. It's locked again with the big play. Second turnover he's been a part of. A fumble recovery, run back for a touchdown, and now the goal line interception. Manning's third of the game. Can't blame everything on Peyton Manning. He, he had a touchdown pass dropped on him just to play previous. Right here, the ball just, just gets away from him, and it's, it's just a poorly thrown ball. Gators run it for four. Elijah Williams. Four-yard run on that fourth down play. Was there someone open? You can see Marcus Nash, the inside slot receiver against man-to-man. -man. He's all alone. The, the defensive back got picked off. He's wide open, but Peyton Manning was looking at the other side of the field. His eyes weren't towards Nash. Peyton has now surpassed his interception total of a year ago, five on the season. Last year, he set the all-time SEC record for lowest interception percentage. Games on the coverage, pass caught by Anthony. First down. Florida says we have one more drive in us before the half. You'll see the real Steve Spurrier right here, 35 to 6, a minute and 42 seconds on the clock. Most of us in coaching would be running the ball here, satisfied with punting, making sure you come off the field 35 to 6, you're elated. I'm not sure Steve Spur will do that. Guarantee he's looking for more. But not on that play will they find any gain. That's Williams. Stopped by Hines. 120. Clock running. Well, the clock still burning. Gators have two timeouts remaining. Now a timeout call. They exhausted a lot of seconds there before they used the timeout. We'll take it with them. Well, a record has been set at Neyland Stadium, the largest on-campus crowd in history. College history, 107,608. That breaks a Michigan stadium record. 56 seconds to go in the half. Second and 11, football free. Still on the ground and recovered by Tennessee. Looked like the Gators got a little complacent on that series and it may cost them before the intermission. Jason Parker recovered. The ball is slippery because of the rain earlier today. The ball right here just goes right through his hands. It's a little high. He just mis mishandles it. Elijah Williams. Tennessee comes up with the big turnover. 50 seconds left on the clock. This would be a psychological lift. Mm, would it? Get on, get on the scoreboard here with a few seconds left. Ball at the 38. Tennessee has... All three of its timeouts to work with. Screen 
out of the backfield. Graham will have to use a timeout here. Down to the 35. So they use one timeout, only gaining three on that play. 35 to six Gators. Tennessee to the line, 35 yard line, 39 seconds to go in the first half. Tate hit inside the 20. Will stop the clock to move the chains. Ball at the 17. That's an 18 yard pickup. Peyton Manning doing a good job of getting his team organized in the two-minute drill here. He's got two timeouts left. There's no reason to use one. You can get a call, play called before the chains ever move. Want to go left side to the end zone, overthrowing Kent. 22 seconds. Been in this scoring zone. In fact, just a last possession. Came away empty. Interception by Lott. Never in, in my wildest dreams that I think Tennessee would turn the ball over five times mm. in the first half. Or even for the game. Yeah. yeah. Or for a couple games, the way they Real. work turnovers. And last year, 10 on the whole season. Five and a half today. Manning to the end zone, almost intercepted by Brown. Brown and Showers on the coverage. Pass Flo intended for Nash. Florida blitz the middle linebacker, James Bates. He came, came with the pressure right there. Nobody picked him up. Right here, almost. Tico Brown almost gets that interception. Goes high for the ball. And Bates with a fumble recovery and a very active day for the middle linebacker for the Gators I had him in summer camp when he was in high school at UCLA he came out to our summer camp he can run he's active he's an instinctive football player 17 seconds in the half third down for Tennessee throwing off balance incomplete would you kick a field goal now I, I think that right here you go you go for it go for your score I, I think at this point in time you've you've got to you've got to be able to just get your your team excited again. Phil Fulmer's got a difficult job at halftime. He's got to go in there and basically say to his team, "Look, fellas, everything that we planned for went the wrong way, but we've got to prove what we're made of in the second half. We got to come out here and play with Florida on an even keel. We've got to demonstrate we can do that." So fourth down, plus well, only 12 seconds to go in the second quarter. The blitz. Needing a boost. Manning got it away. Intercepted. Look out. Open field ahead. Fred Weary. They converge on him, though. Cut off the angle with Jay Graham. Turnover number six to close out the half. Picking Peyton Manning for the fourth time in the game. Lawrence Wright was blitzing, got in the face of Manning. Forcing the bad throw. Manning in one half matches the entire number of interceptions he threw the entire season of 1995. Let's go down to Michelle Tafoya. Well, Steve, this crowd, 107,000 strong, is pretty stunned at how dominating well, we you got, are. Yeah, we got off to a good start, Michelle, and then we got a little lazy on offense, but our defense playing super right now. We need to we need to stay on the field offensively and not give them all these chances if we can. Thanks, Coach. All right. That's the end of the first half with the score. Florida 35, Tennessee 6. Pat O'Brien, Craig James, and Danny Sheridan coming along with college football today after a word from your local station. 35 to 6, Florida. Kicking to start the second half. Tennessee had deferred to the second. That's Westmoreland fielding the short boot. And he runs it out to the 28-yard line. Our Michelle Tafoy had a chance to visit with Philip Fulmer coming out of the locker room. Incredibly high expectations. What do you say to your team? How do you get them to bounce back after that? just go out and execute better. Obviously very disappointed in the first quarter and the turnovers, but this football team will fight you, and I believe we'll come back and make a football game of this yet. 
your offensive line took a big hit with the loss of Jarvis Rito. How do you protect Peyton Manning? We'll work at it. We'll work at it. Thank you, Coach. The old offensive line coach at Tennessee, Philip Fulmer. He was a guard on the team a quarter century ago and captain of the 1971 squad. Manning completes his first throw of the second half to Peerless Price, who caught the 72-yard touchdown. Tennessee's one shining moment. In the first half, the total yardage now is uh, well, in favor of Tennessee, but the glaring stat, the six turnovers. And the 21 points off those six turnovers, Jim, that's the glaring stat right there. Three touchdowns they've given off, off those turnovers. That's been Tennessee's downfall today. Second down and two. Manning 13 of 27 for 223 yards. Picked off four times. It was intended for Nash. It'll be third and two. Overall, six mistakes by the Volunteers. This was the first one. Came just after the first touchdown. Set up a score and then batted around, picked off by James Bates. Fumble recovery was the third. Lott ran it back for a touchdown. Make it 35-0. The fourth, a strip by Chester, recovered by Beauchamp. On a fourth and goal, turnover number five, the pick by Lott. And then on the last play of the half, there was another interception, that one by Weary. Third and two from the shotgun. Good time and good throw. Price with the first down. Weary says, hey, wait a minute, I got the football. Nope, first down for Tennessee. You have to wonder about the turnovers, Jim. You have to wonder how much of that was a result of Tennessee being tight at the start of the game. They put an awful lot of pressure on themselves. They built this game to be the game of the decade, biggest game in Tennessee history. Sometimes that can tighten you up. You can come out, and you're just not free to play. And I think that happened to Tennessee a little bit. In the second half, they'll play freer. I agree with Phil Fulmer. They've got fight in them. They'll fight. First down, Manning, open man. It's McCullough. Paula had a chance to grab a touchdown in the first half. Holds on for seven on that play. Werfel completed seven, Terry, four of them for touchdowns. That's the key figure right there, Danny Werfel. The Florida receivers were just too much for the Tennessee defensive backs. They couldn't match up. They could not play the structure of defense they wanted to play against Florida. Werfel now with... Well, touchdowns in his career, 82 touchdown passes. You gotta be impressed with that guy. What he does every year is incredible. Part of it's the system in his head coach, but he is an incredibly accurate throw. Second and two, Graham darts for the first. You know, Werfel's moved up to number five all time, touchdown passes in college history. He's got a chance to reach 100 for his career. Only one player's ever thrown for 100 touchdowns, and that's Ty Depper, who ended up with 121 at BYU. And, and I've heard people talk about his release. They say it's a strange release. He doesn't look good throwing the ball. All I know is he gets it where it's supposed to be. You like the results. Forget about the yeah, release, I, right? I don't care what the guy looks like. Just make sure you get it to the receiver. That guy can do it. Benji Schuler in as a receiver for the Volunteers. New set of downs. Fake, pass, caught, 30-yard line, down to the 25. That's Jermaine Copeland, the backup quarterback, who also spends time as a receiver. 18 yards on that pass play. You don't see very often in college football, pro football, a guy who's able to play two ways Copeland can do that. Being the backup quarterback, he's also an outstanding wide receiver. He can grasp the offense from both positions. Very unusual. Tennessee's Cordell Stewart. Mark Levine in his backfield. Pressure in on Manning. Never had a chance. That's Willie Cohen's. Phil Fulmer was right. His team has fight. They've come out here, received the opening kickoff, put together a good-looking drive right here. But that was the third sack of the game for the Gators. Willie Cohen's coming off the right side, continues to put the pass rush 
on Peyton Manning. That's as much a coverage sack as anything. Peyton Manning couldn't find anything open down the field. Cohen's a sophomore. Up the 29. Manning and a miscommunication. Tyler came back. Manning threw long. Right there, you can see clearly the miscommunication between Manning and his wideout. Those are the things you just keep working on in practice. You got to work them out. This isn't the kind of game where you can allow those miscommunications. You've got to be totally on your football game when you're trying to beat Florida for the Southeastern Conference Championship. Third and 14, opening series of the second half. Volunteers trying to make a little statement about what kind of fight they have. Need a big play here. Pass in the area of Kyler, who was open. Just a poorly thrown ball that time by Peyton Manning. Again, you have to wonder about whether or not the ball's heavy because of the rain and, and slick, but it doesn't seem to be that way for Danny Werfel. He's being able to handle this. And also the pressure. They have put a lot of pressure on Peyton Manning just as they predicted they would. Jeff Hall will attempt his first field goal of the year, 46 yards. Fulmer wants to put some points on the board for this first possession of the second half. 46-yard kick. Got to hook a little bit, and he got it in there. Jeff Hall, good job. Good, good decision by Phil Fulmer. Florida 35, Tennessee 9 early in the third quarter. Jeff Hall's 46-yard field goal. Tennessee has scored the last nine after Florida raced to a 35-0 lead. Now the Gators to touch the football for the first time in the second half. Green on the return up the middle. And a flag falls that may pin Florida back inside of the 20. Fred White, a special team specialist, comes in there. Lou Holtz in Notre Dame with a huge win in Austin. Heartbreaking time, though, for John Makovic and the Longhorns. Boy, it was a tough, tough loss for, for Texas. And how about that Michigan score? You know, after what Michigan did at Colorado last week and Boston College was just block, slaughtered by Virginia by Tech. Be 10 yards from the side of the foul, be first down. Southern Cal going into the fourth quarter at the Astrodome, leading Houston only 17-9. How about, the, how about them Cougars, How huh? about the Cougars? <laughs> you got a smile on your face. Yeah. Why is that? I, I see a touchdown and a two sending that game to overtime. Houston won last week in overtime against Pittsburgh. All right, so Werfel and the Gators from the 11-yard line. End around. Anthony for only about three. Jason Parker stabilized that side of the field. Leonard Little was over there also. One of the one of the interesting things this half will be how how will Steve, Steve Spurrier play? He's up 35 to nine. Does he does he all of a sudden kind of draw his self in and, and be conservative if, if you will, or does he just play with the same personality? I say he plays with the same personality. Spurrier is a unique coach. There's not many like him. Well, he opened up with an end the round, and he did not sound satisfied when he talked to <laughs> Michelle going to that to the locker room at halftime. Well, the end of the round's a safe play. Second and seven. Well, they're gonna put in the air here, Terry. Werfel overthrows Ike Hilliard. A wide open Ike Hilliard, wide open. Ike Hilliard runs a crossing route here. Tennessee has not changed their defense from the first half. Here you see Terry Fair trying to cover Ike Hilliard. He doesn't have a chance right there. Werfel just let the ball get away from him. Wasn't a good throw by Danny. Ike Hilliard from Patterson, Louisiana. He's known Peyton Manning since they were kids. In fact, worked at a Manning quarterback camp this summer in New Orleans. 
as a counselor. Here's the whisper again where they're trying to whisper the play to everyone. One on the play clock, just snapped it in time. Third and seven, hello, Leonard Little. You've got to be impressed with the way Tennessee has come out and started the second half. Phil Fulmer said the football team had some fight. And sure enough, they come out, they get a field goal, and now they stop Florida on the opening drive. Leonard Little right there. Hello. Looked like he was lined up as a middle linebacker that time. They're moving him around. They don't want him to line up at left defensive end where Florida can double him and help on the pass protection against him. Robbie Stevenson to punt from his own end zone. Fair, the return man at the 50. Had a pretty kick. Fair retrieves it, 44-yard line, trying to get wide. Now cuts back middle, and he is belted at the 49 after a five-yard run back. Ronnie Battle on the hit, but... Tennessee has the football near midfield with 10 minutes to go, third quarter. Terry Fair may have been injured on that return the very back end of the play. Terry, watch this. You can't see exactly what happens to his leg, but big Tim Bochomp right there, he falls on him. You know Florida's got speed when they have defensive ends covering punts. That's an indication yeah, of speed. I'm telling you. And he's one of the first ones down there. So Fair getting treatment on the bench. Tennessee first down from its 49. Manning steps forward, rifles it long, and Tico Brown, did he have it? Incomplete. Oh, he wants the interception. Florida came with, Florida came with the blitz from the outside. Put the, put the pressure on Peyton Manning, and he threw this ball into coverage. This was not a good throwing decision right here. Joey Kent is not open. Tico Brown almost makes the interception right there. Looked like he ball, may have had it. Well, the ball came loose there right when he hit the ground, but it's hard to say. Second and 10. Running play, Graham for about four. Bates. Good one on one tackle. Bates having a nice day here, coach. He sure is. He's got an interception, fumble recovery. The thing that Tennessee's been unable to do is have any consistency in their running game. They came in, David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator, said they wanted to establish some consistency with that running game. Florida has taken that away from them today, and certainly the score has something to do with it. But even on that play they just ran, they couldn't really rip the Florida defense. Third down for Tennessee. In traffic, that one too almost intercepted. Marcus Nash was the intended receiver. Demetri Jackson was in there. They're going to punt, punt the football. With 9-11 to go, third quarter. If you ever have a fake in your repertoire, you've got good field position here. You're down 35 to 9. It's not a bad time to think about the fake punt. Florida's playing for it, too. They're looking for it. Binion boots it away. And touched at about the 7 by Gaines. Corey Gaines downs it at the seven yard line. Steve Spurrier hired on New Year's Eve 1989 and what he has done with this program in the 90s. It's all instincts with him, Jim. He, he, has, he just coaches, he has a feel for the defense. He, being a great quarterback, the Heisman Trophy winner, just has a tremendous sense about him when the game starts to unfold. He can call plays from the sideline better than anybody in the country. Inside they go for just a couple. Before Spurrier arrived on the scene, Florida, a charter member of the SEC, had uh, not won any SEC titles in 56 years. Now in the 90s, he's already claimed four crowns. Well, he's... he's very unique, as I said, and, and the thing about him, 
he's he's trying for an unprecedented four straight. No one's ever done that. Bear Bryant shares the record with him, but he's going for four straight, and based on the game thus far, he's going to have a shot at it. Second and nine. And a running play only for another yard. 30 years after Spurrier's Heisman Trophy winning season for Florida. He threw for 36 touchdowns in his career, and Manning in the first half here moved past him with his 37th on the all-time SEC list. And he's a Tennessee boy from Johnson City. Could have been back a volunteer, but went down to the Gators what, instead. What if he had gone to Tennessee? Amazing. Third down, Hilliard takes the hit. He's near the first down. Austin won the coverage. Jason Parker helped out. Looks like it might be enough for the first. You know, all the incredible things that Steve Spurrier has done, all the stories I've heard about him, the one that intrigues me the most is when he kicked the winning field goal against Auburn. Uh, they were playing in a very close game late in the game. Steve Spurrier went up to Ray Graves, the coach. They were out of normal field goal range. He hadn't kicked a field goal in six games. Walks up to the coach and says, I can make it. How many guys would have the guts to do that? He had a zip-on shoe. He went to the sideline, put a zip-on shoe on, and drilled it for the win. That's the game they say won in the Heisman. First down, Gators, and a little squirt for about uh, four yards there from Terry Jackson. In fact, Terry, it was uh, Auburn, Florida, 1966. Shook Jordan, Ray Graves meeting. Spurrier threw for 257 yards. They were 6-0 going into the game, ranked seventh, but tied 27 all. 40-yard field goal attempt to win the game. Heisman ballots had been mailed earlier in the week, and Spurrier, what a timely performance, drilling it right through. <laughs> they say he had to convince Ray Grace to let him do it. Second and five, and a first down by Jackson. Leonard Little ran him down. That's called being a gamer. You know, also in that game, I was just reading material on that game this week. He punted the football also for Florida that day, six times for a 46-yard average. I mean, did it all. Punted, field goals, threw it, ran it, won a Heisman. Well, he was an outstanding punter and, and known for his quarterback play and his punting, not really his field goal kicking. So football, 33-yard line, clock operating at 6.20. And counting 35-9 Gators, third quarter. Now Wilson hit him first. And let's check in with an update from Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? All right, Jim. Well, Tennessee's Terry Fair, who was injured on that punt return, has suffered a sprained right ankle. They're taping it up, but they plan to hold him out for a little while. So don't expect to see him returning punts at least for a few more minutes, Jim. And that's a treatment for, for quite a while now. So Terry Fair may, in fact, not return. Tennessee has certainly had more than their fair share of injuries today. Big, big issue in this game is the injury factor. Second down, 10. Now, Florida. Keeping it on the ground, they go airborne with Hilliard. Incomplete, they rule it. He was hit by Hines. You've got to give the Florida offensive line credit. Werfel had all day to throw this ball, these deep, these deep intermediate routes, you have to have protection in order to get those balls thrown. Werfel had plenty of protection on that particular play. Hilliard, who last year caught nine passes against Tennessee for four touchdowns in all. He had one here in the first half. Third down, third and 10. Tennessee threatening blitz and Timeout called, just barely beating the play clock. We'll take it with him. Actually, now they rule that uh, Florida did not get the signal in time, so it's a five-yard penalty, and they get the timeout back. 
Werfel was already back over to the sideline. He thought he'd gotten the timeout call. You've got to be impressed with the way Danny Werfel manages this offense. He takes the plays from the sideline from Steve Spurrier. Normally, they play all kinds of no-huddle offense, are not playing no-huddle today because of the noise factor here in Neyland Stadium. But he really manages the offense well. Third and 15. Tennessee's on the blitz. Yep. Noel's there. And Warfel is down. There is a flag also on the field. Torrey Noel blitzing from the secondary. This is one of the things that Tennessee didn't do in the first half. They had Leonard Little there in the middle, lined up at middle linebacker, but they're blitzing from the outside on the left of your screen. Torrey Noel there on the sack. You got to disrupt the rhythm of Danny Werfel. That's when you've got a chance to slow him down. A holding call refused, and now a new returner with Fair getting the treatment. It's Peerless Price at his own 40. Stevenson catches this one clean. Price runs it down from the 23. And Tony George stays right with him. Robbie Stevenson pleased with that boot. 55 yarder, and it's 35 to 9, Florida. I hope we don't get charged full retail. <laughs> You'll look good in that baseball hat. I'd wear it next week. We'll be at Syracuse for Syracuse, Virginia Tech. Some will see Kentucky and Florida from Gainesville. Tennessee takes over from its 27. Manning with no time, got it away, just barely to Graham for about a yard. The report from the Tennessee bench is that Fair with a sprained ankle may return, but Fred White, back up, Special team player with a pulled hamstring. He will not return. The Florida defense keeps coming on Peyton Manning. He's getting hit all day long from different angles. He can't get his feet set, really planted to throw the ball. Ball looked to, to be trapped, but they counted as a completion and a one yard gain, second and nine. 430 remaining, third quarter. Copeland to the 44. A gain of 15. We got an update on the Southern Cal Houston game. Take it away, Pat O'Brien. All right, Jim Nance and the Astrodome. Brad Otten for SC out of that rotating quarterback situation. Hits Billy Miller on a 31-yard touchdown pass for USC. They missed the extra point. 23 to 9 now, SC. And Jim, the hat is free. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Those guys know how to rub it in. Yeah, They're in they? New York. Could have used that hat here in the first uh, half, the helmet. We had uh, rain showers here. But it's clearing, and Tennessee putting together a little flurry here. Joey Kent to the 49 of Florida. Tennessee, six turnovers all in the first half. Werfel with four touchdown passes. Now you think back to that uh, first touchdown of the game. It, Occurred on a fourth and 11 play from the Tennessee 35. I think it shocked them. Tennessee has gone to a no huddle offense here trying to fight the clock. It's good decision making by Philip Fulmer. There's no reason to huddle. Manning can run the offense as efficiently at the line of scrimmage and save time, particularly when you're in the third quarter here. You still got a long game to play. Get your team up to the line of scrimmage. Get plays called. Graham with the first down yardage. He got it to the 45. Graham with 12 carries for 31 yards. He's averaging less than three yards a carry on the season. This after setting the Tennessee record last year in one year of 1,438 yards. And you know what that comes back to? That comes back to the offensive line. Any way you slice it, four new players in that line, it's going to take them time to develop. You just don't step in there, become starters overnight. Tyler with the catch. 
And again, no huddle for Tennessee. Last year's offensive line, 148 career starts. Very experienced this year's very inexperienced. Phil Fulmer, being a former offensive line coach himself, he'll bring that line along. They just weren't ready for this kind of a big game this early. Open player and football fumbled. And what a play by Copeland. They're going to rule him down at the 24. Copeland ran back to get it after McCullough dropped it. McCullough's catch will count. First down at the 24. See McCullough fumbled it, and then he kind of slapped it over there, seeing a teammate in the area. You can see right here, he catch, makes a, a beautiful catch. The ball comes out. They've ruled him down. The ball's in, knocked away by the Florida defender, and Copeland comes in there and makes a great effort to save it. But they rule it down where McCullough made the catch. And it was a good call. From the 24, 2.30 to go, third quarter. And then he's got time on this one. McCullough again. 10-5, starting for the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee! not going to go for two. They brought in Hall for the PAT. 24 yards to Andy McCullough, the junior from Dayton, Ohio. 35 to 16. 16 unanswered now by Tennessee. Tennessee using outstanding strategy right here, playing four wideouts. Andy McCullough in the slot against man-to-man -man coverage. They get picked off on the coverage. He gets wide open, makes up for that touchdown pass he dropped earlier. James Bates got picked off by one of the officials. Here you see Peyton Manning, his eyes focused right there. The crowd's starting to come back on us, Jim. Well, you think about it, 35-16, and Tennessee, right before the half, had a first and goal to go situation at the five, plus a, a drop touchdown or two on that one series, and they had another chance right before the intermission. Well, the thing that I liked is when they went to no huddle offense, there with about three and a half minutes left in the third quarter, Great strategy on the part of the Tennessee coaches. Why not? I bet you they stay in no huddle offense the rest of the day. They should. Manning completed all six passes on that drive, covering 68 yards with a touchdown pass of 24. Redell Anthony to the 30. Neyland Stadium, built 75 years ago for a cost of $20,000. They had 3,200 seats back then. It was known as Shields Watkins Stadium. Now it seats over 100,000. In fact, the all-time record crowd on campus. I saw some fans at halftime, Jim, out in the parking lot. They were leaving the game. What if this thing gets turned around? Will they be sick or what? <laughs> they need a big defensive play now, 35-16. They got one. A gain of a yard by Williams. Al Wilson on the hit. Florida has not had good field position this half. They've been backed up most of the half. They have good field position right here. Steve Spurrier, it's going to be interesting to watch him now. 35-16, what do you do? Do you play and guard your lead, or you just turn it loose and let it go? He's never been one, afraid. Never. Of turning it loose and letting it go. Not that guy. Second and nine. Coming on the blitz again. Anthony with the catch. At the 37, that's still short of a first by about uh, three yards.
Right here, Danny Werfel managing his offense, the Florida offensive line, an outstanding job picking up the blitz, giving Werfel time to get that ball to the outside. Third and three, under a minute to go, third quarter. Oh, that's close to the first. They're not going to put the football quite at the 40. I think he might be a little bit shy. Raymond Austin tripped him. Depends on that spot by the official. Everything is on that spot. Well, they already have, say, fourth down. He had to get just outside of the 40. Now what do you do? Put your punt team in or go for it? Williams a little groggy after that carry. And they're going to go for it. They may not get the play away before the end of the third quarter. This is what I say makes Steve Spurrier amazing. so unique. This is amazing. Well, the gun sounds to end the third quarter. We'll have a long time to contemplate this call. <laughs> You're not kidding. Wow. That's the end of the third quarter. Tennessee outscored them 10 0 in that period. Florida 35, Tennessee 16 will return after this message and a word from your local station. Here we go. We change ends. Jim Nance, Terry Donahue, Michelle Tafoya. Fourth and inches. This Florida. is wild, Jim. Going I'm, I'm predicting a quarterback sneak. I can't believe he's going to go for this. What a huge momentum swing it could be here for the Volunteers. Going for sweep. it indeed, and they're going to get it. Jackson for about 15 to the Tennessee 45. Well, Bert, you got to believe that Steve Spurrier believes. He believes in his football team to have the guts to make this call. Takes the ball outside on the sweep play. Big play for the Florida offense. Tennessee was stacked inside. They, they expected the quarterback sneak. Takes the ball outside for the first down. Look at Phil Fulmer here. He's getting out of the way of those yeah. guys rolling over there. First down and a good hit. The lick put on by Tyrone Hines. That's three times in this game. Florida has gone for it on fourth down. Three for three. Wow. Wow. One, in fact, was the game's opening touchdown on the fourth and 11 from the 35 of Tennessee. You know, I think Steve just wants to keep calling plays. He just loves to call offensive plays. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to see that defense on the field. Well, he excels at that. Second and 11. Florida had only 19 yards in the third quarter. Game 16 on the running play to Jackson for the first. Werfel flings it incomplete. Flag down at the line of scrimmage. I think we have a holding call there. Looked like one of the Tennessee linemen had broken through and was taken down. Bill Duff made a beeline for the quarterback. Playing conditions have certainly improved dramatically, and Florida just happened to score all 35 of its points Holding. during the rainstorm. It lasted for about a quarter and a half here, the game's first quarter and a half. Then the ball has been dry ever since, and they've kind of been shut down. Tennessee's relaxed now. They're playing better, playing with more intensity. They're putting more pressure on the quarterback. They didn't do that early in the game. Backs the Gators to their own 42, second and 22. Out of the backfield, it's Jackson to the 45. Billy Barron came in from behind. It'll set up third and about 10. Gators won their last 13 SEC games. How about how about 25 and 2 in their last 27 conference games? 
13 in a row looking for 14 but rather stagnant since halfway through the second quarter Werfel left side and Johnson bats it away intended for Hilliard Johnson getting the unexpected start at Nickelback today against Florida. Excellent coverage, makes an outstanding break on the ball right here, almost gets a pick, take it to distance. So Stevenson back in to punt. And again, Peerless Price, not their normal returner, with fair, gimpy, sprained ankle on the sideline. Price will field the punt. Dives for it at the 12. Fair catch. 13 minutes, six seconds remaining at Neyland Stadium. 35-16. Tennessee drove for a touchdown the last time it had the football, but this series starts at the Volunteers' 12. Wholesale changes on the offensive line. Manning, three-step drop, hits his target, hits Price. Out to the 30, to the 32-yard line. 20 yards. Price with 126 yards overall on the game. That's a career high, plus the touchdown in the first half. Tennessee, once again, going to the no-huddle offense here at the line of scrimmage. They have time. The chains have to move. The clock doesn't start until they're moved. They can get a play called, waste very little time off the clock by going no-huddle. Take the run, fire it, almost intercepted, and then Bates came back for it. It falls incomplete. Harmless in the end, but so dangerous for a tantalizing two-second stretch, it seems. Tennessee has isolated the wide receivers two-on-two two against the Florida defensive backs. Here the ball's just batted around. Looks like Bates made the interception for a second, then lost it. What's he want, another one? He's already got one today off a of ricochet. And a fumble recovery. Jermaine Copeland in as a receiver. Four receivers in all. Second and ten. Oh, Graham oh. took his eye off of it. Turned around. Saw Bochamp in sight. Let's get another update back in New York. And our man, Pat O'Brien. All right, Jim, BC Michigan over now. BC was up 14-7 going into the fourth quarter, but Michigan took control. And the Scott Dreisbach to Jeremy Tooman on a 58-yard touchdown pass as the Wolverines survive a scare. Dreisbach now 7-0 as a starter. Back to Jim Nance. That was a hard fought one though today in Ann Arbor. Figure Michigan psychologically coming off that big victory over Colorado, playing Boston College, who had been demolished. Tough game psychologically for Michigan. Third down, Manning needs the pass play. As Nash twisting short of the first. That is 38 yard line. Willie Cohen's kept him short of the stick. Crowd calling for the volunteers to go for it, but they've already brought out the punt team. 12 minutes, 10 seconds on the clock. You've got Reed to give Dale Anthony will return it. You've got to give the Florida defense some credit. That was their 10th blitz of the second half. They've not called off the dogs. They've continued to press man to man coverage and kept bringing the heat on Peyton Manning. What a kick. Caught that one all the way into the end zone. 62 yards, but Florida will bring it out to the 20 with a 19 point lead. Two tight ends in the game for the Gators. Jermaine Allen, Paris Ross, and movement on the left side, and there's the, the flag. We'll back up Florida five. Fred Weary looking at a few diagrams. 
have we seen two totally different halves of football. Mm -hmm. Florida just explodes in the first half. In the second half, it's been all Tennessee. They've dominated the entire second half, both in terms of score, yardage, field position, everything. Barry Wilson was the coach talking to Weary, but the five-yard procedure penalty backs up Florida to the 15. Tennessee blitzing. Werfel got it away. Got his wish, too. He avoided the sack. Top 10 tonight, Arizona State will host Nebraska. Last year, that was a 77-28 Cornhusker crushing of uh, Arizona State, but Arizona, that was in Lincoln. Arizona State's going to be ready for that, that game. They're one of the favorites out on the West Coast. Seminoles won on Thursday. Texas fell in a very tough fashion today. Last second field goal by Notre Dame. Michigan escaped the upset. Miami was at the beach. Had the day off. Warfel, not this time. Jonathan Brown. Corey Gaines also coming in from the free safety position to blitz the quarterback. Florida had total isolation, one-on-one -on -one coverage outside. Werfel just couldn't get to it quick enough. It was an opportunity to strike for a huge play. He just couldn't quite get there. Yeah, they got the crowd again on its feet. Third and 20. In on Terry Jackson. And the Gators will have to kick the football out of their own end zone. 's got to be proud of the way his team has responded at halftime all the hopes and expectations go down the drain they come out here in the second half they're fighting controlling the ball game in the second half you got to feel good about yourself and your team as a coach when that happens fourth and 24 they lost 14 yards on that series Stevenson standing six yards deep in the end zone they bring 10 players but uh, Gets it away and gets the favorable bounce. Just when it looked like Tennessee might have it in Florida territory, they'll start the drive at their own 36. 58-yard punt. Tennessee has blitzed the last five plays in a row to shut the Florida offense down. Earlier in the game, the heat wasn't the same. They didn't have the same speed. I equate it to being tight psychologically for the game. All that pressure, they just couldn't be relaxed enough. Once the game appeared to be out of hand, they kind of relaxed, turn it loose, and get after it. 9.56 remaining in the game. Here comes Florida on the blitz. Manning going long. We had his receiver out there. The seldom used Troy Pratt. Let's get another sideline report from Michelle Tafoya. Well, Florida strong safety Lawrence Wright wears this jersey during practice in tribute to a couple of friends that he lost. Arthur King wore number one at Austin P. He died of a heart attack about two years ago, and Milton Barnes wore number 56 at Miami. He was murdered this last summer. Now, during the game, Lawrence Wright continues the tribute by wearing a T-shirt under his uniform with both pictures of emblazoned on that shirt. So while he's lost those two friends, he keeps them close by, Jim. Great story, Lawrence Wright. And second and ten, keeping a watchful eye here on Manning. Catch by Nash. They rule it out. Out of bounds. Did not have a foot down. And I think they're not going to like the replay when they see it because it sure looked like he was in. It looks like he's got a foot clearly inbounds right here. You can see it. The only question you have to wonder is, was that foot on the line? You can't see it from that angle, but sure looked to me like 
That was a tough call against Tennessee. If he clipped his toenails, he was in bounds. <laughs> That was close. Yeah, you know, the guy right there on the sideline, he had a better view than our camera did of that. I would expect he made the right call. They generally do. Third and 10. Good pass play. First down, 48-yard line. Andy McCullough, 16 yards. You can credit the offensive line of Tennessee that time. They gave Peyton Manning time enough to get his feet set and to throw that ball. Right here, again, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage. When you when you get that kind of room as a wide receiver, you're gonna beat that kind of coverage most of the time. Manning. Lot on the coverage. Copeland to the 43. The two styles of defense are so similar. Both teams continue to blitz, continue to play man-to-man -man coverage, give up a zone here or there. They play very similar to one another. Tennessee now, four wideouts, no huddle offense, playing a little bit like Florida. Second and five, nine minutes to go, clock running. Across the middle, another completion. Again, it's Copeland for a first down at the 27. A gain of 16. Neyland Stadium, 107,600 on hand. Jim Nance with Terry Donahue and Michelle Tafoya as Florida here jumped in front 35 to nothing in the second quarter. Tennessee has come back to score the last 16. Copeland in and out of his hands. You know, on this series, and Terry, we've seen Tennessee play its first two games of the year. They tried to go along the number 41 Troy Pratt, we had not seen him in action all season long, and he's a, a track athlete, track scholarship athlete. Slipped him in for the long play and uh, didn't work, but kind of interesting how that was uh, one they had in their hip pocket. Just tried to get a, a mismatch with track speed against football speed. Didn't work, but the thought certainly was there. Second and 10. Manning to the end zone, Schuler. Overthrown. Tony George on the coverage. Manning, by the way, moving in on 400 yards passing. 389 right now. But four first half interceptions. He'd much rather have those four interceptions back and 100 yards off that passing total. Those passing totals don't mean anywhere near as much to him because of those interceptions. It's a career high in yardage and attempts. Facing third and ten. Got it away to avoid the sack. Mike Moten in on the quarterback. Just good four-man pressure that time. Florida didn't come with any blitz package. Just let their down four defensive linemen get there. Hurry the quarterback. Peyton Manning, outstanding job unloading the ball. Fourth down, and the Volunteers going for it. Have to, with only 8.27 remaining. Down 19. <laughs> the middle. What a catch at the three-yard line. Peerless Price, he has arrived in this game today. We had been told during the month of August he was one of the most improved players on this team. What an afternoon he's enjoying. The Tennessee coaches said that no one on their team worked any harder this summer to get better than Peerless Price. Peyton Manning puts that ball in exactly the right spot, enables him to make a body catch, protecting the ball, and making the first down. Price with 150 yards on, or give him 149 on six catches and a touchdown. First and goal, Manning, man open. It's Lane for the touchdown. Aaron. 
Eric Lane, the backup fullback, a senior from East Orange, New Jersey. His second touchdown catch of the season. Eric Lane just sneaks out of the backfield right here, wide open. Somebody on Florida busted the coverage. Nobody's supposed to be that open. Somebody busted that coverage. And now going for two. Going for two to try to get within 11. Eight minutes remaining in the game. Incomplete. A 64-yard drive, all of it through the air, kept alive on a fourth down completion. It's 35-22, Florida. All right, Pat and Craig. So much of the Heisman watch focused in on the two quarterbacks here. Tennessee outscoring Florida 16-0 here in the second half. Warfel with four touchdown passes versus no interceptions. Manning three touchdown tosses, four picks, but over 400 yards. That's Green to the 25. How did he get that open for the touchdown, Terry? Lawrence Wright, the safety for Florida, takes the play fake. You're going to see him right here. He's supposed to cover Eric Lane right here, but the backfield action draws him away from the play. Then he tries to recover. It's just too late. Still some Tennessee fans left here, Jim. I think they may have come back. <laughs> the ones you saw heading for the cars. I don't see an empty seat. But Jackson twisting for about five to the 30. Noel with the tackle. It's almost like we've watched two separate games, and after the game, Phil Fulmer, they're going to ask him, if he doesn't win the game, if he doesn't come back and win the game, they're going to ask him, what was the difference? How could you play like that in the first half and then turn it around in the second half? And the truth is, you're not quite sure. You're not positive what happened. Second and five. Florida in no hurry. 7-15 remaining in the game. Jackson free for the first down. Piece of hard running there by the sophomore from Gainesville, Florida. You know, had they made that two-point conversion, talking about Tennessee, 35-24, there would have been a field goal. Well, it's yeah. a touchdown and a two away from a possible tie game to send it in overtime. Sure, and coaches plan for those two-point situations long in advance. They have cards up in the, on the, in the press box that tells them exactly when they want to go for two or when they want to kick. But it all comes down eventually to the head coach making that decision. First down for Florida. And stuffed by Leonard Little. Have you seen improvement in Leonard Little's play today without no, that cast no on the right hand? No question about it. Leonard Little is a different player today without that cast. And the other thing, Tennessee's done a very good job of moving him. He's been hard to find. You've not been able to lock in on him today over at that left end position. He's lined up in a variety of positions throughout the day. And as a result, he's having his best game of the year. Second and 10, approaching six minutes to go. And Werfel calls timeout with one second on the down clock. Said, hey, we're going to use a timeout. We might as well burn another five or six seconds. 5.55 remaining. We'll be right back. Jim Nance with Terry Donahue, Michelle Tafoya, Neyland Stadium. Final six minutes to go. Florida, second and ten from its own 37. Werfel's pass, very dangerous. And he was flattened after the release. 
Green grounded the quarterback. Tennessee continues to impress me with how hard they're fighting to get back into this game and their spirit. I, I, I'm impressed with the character, the toughness of the Tennessee football team. And what did Philip Fulmer tell Michelle coming out at halftime? He promised. Yeah. So you, you watch. Well, they're, they're, they, they've got a lot on the line, and they, they're tough, and they've committed to Tennessee and to, to Philip Fulmer and his staff. Third and ten. Hines picked off at the last second. The pass short of the first. Redell Anthony thought he had the first. He was celebrating a bit, but I think they're going to be about a yard shy. Now we're going to find out if you go for it on fourth and one. <laughs> now here we go again. The game maxims in the Tennessee locker room. At first, the game or breaks go against you. Don't let up. Put on more steam. Boy, did they go against them early in the game. But in the second half, Tennessee has responded with more speed with more steam. And number seven, carry the fight, keep it there for 60 minutes. The thing about football is you never really know what's going to happen. Strange things over the course of college football history have happened week in and week out. And who knows? Five minutes and 32 seconds to go, 22-35. Hey, it ain't over till it's over, as they say. And that's the truth. It's never done. Well, Werfel got a word with Steve Spurrier, and they're showing signs of going for it here as they <laughs> have the offensive unit still on the field. A timeout was called by the Tennessee Volunteers. So they had a chance to visit on the sideline as well with their staff. It'll be fourth and less than a yard. Why doesn't this surprise me? <laughs> 5.32 remaining. Again, imagine if they stop them. Look at this formation. Well, you talk about strange formation, and Werfel had him so dazzled, he just kept the football right off right guard for the first down. Look at this formation. They spread everyone out. The only players inside are the center and two guards. Consequently, the defense spreads out. The quarterback runs the sneak for the first down. Why don't we see that more often? I, I have no idea. I've never seen it in my life. I thought you had to have more players on the line than that. I, I'm not sure. I'd like. I'd love to see the the uh, top view of that again. It, it didn't look to me like they had enough players on the line, but they must have. Steve Spurrier had to practice it and prepare it for this game. 5:07 remaining. First down. Jackson to the 49. Four for four today. Fourth down conversions by Florida. Gary Jackson. Gary. Florida and Tennessee both residing in the SEC East Division. 19 and 1, including 18 straight wins. Only lost to Tennessee back in 92. The thing that you have to be impressed with about Florida today, not only are the touchdown passes by Werfel and all that, it's also the rushing game that they've been able to put on against Tennessee. They've run the ball very effectively today. Second and seven. Hines gets him in a hurry. Maybe a gain of two. And a timeout called by Tennessee. The Kroger Food Store is proud to provide the aerial shots for today's Florida-Tennessee game from the world's largest blimp, the Spirit of Atlanta. One of Terry's maxims before the game. Yards rushing. The team with the most yards rushing would win the game. 128 for Florida. Only nine for Tennessee overall in the game. Here's that strange formation here's, again. Here's that formation. Spread them out. Jackson with a hole. Look out with the helmet flying. Corey Gaines took the helmet off. What Steve Spur has employed here is three players on one side of the field, three on the other, leaving just three defenders in the middle, opens up the running game for the back. There's no defense in the middle. Tennessee has spread too wide with the Florida players. They need to bring at least one man inside to, to help tighten that defense down. Boy, Corey Gaines, who delivered that hit, 
that knocked the helmet off the head of Terry Jackson. The stinger, and he is uh, on the ground. Right here, Terry Jackson with the run. It's a heck of a hit right there. It's probably a shoulder stinger. He grabs his shoulder right there. Another look at it here. Right there, knocks the helmet right off. Terry Jackson, and looks like he just took a real good stinger in that shoulder. So another member of the secondary has to hobble to the sideline. Terry Fair out with a sprained ankle. We were told Fred White with a hamstring pull suffered in this game would not return, but he's in there because Gaines is out. Tennessee is thin right now on both offense and defense with all these injuries. Florida has kept the football on this drive for four minutes. Noel and Little bring him down. Smokey's just exhausted by this whole thing. <laughs> Smokey's had enough for the day. You said something about call off the dogs. <laughs> he must have gotten the word. He, uh, well. Misery loves company. <laughs> Look at Smokey. You, you, you talked about Florida's ability to rush the ball. 47 and 1 when they outrush their opponents. You think of them as a passing team, but that's, yep, that's 47 the, and 1. That's during the Steve Spurrier era. Jackson took, took, took a pretty good hit himself that time. It'll be third and about four. Florida next week will host Kentucky. It's SEC home opener for the Gators. Then at Arkansas, that's a rematch of last year's SEC championship game. Arkansas dropped to 0-2 today, and then hosting LSU. Timeout called by Tennessee, and we'll be right back. Florida with a uh, drive that's just milking the clock, and the rest of the Gators' schedule. Auburn will come to Gainesville October 19. Georgia. Vandy, South Carolina, Florida State. Now the question, will Florida move ahead of Florida State in the polls and move up to number two in the country? Third and five, and Jackson able to recover. You saw that option play earlier in the game. Again, situation, third down and five. You expect Steve Spur to throw the ball. You expect something different. He comes out with an option. The unexpected. Fourth down, and here's another situation where they'll go for it with Tennessee out of timeouts. Fourth and four, two minutes remaining. Evans comes up shy of the first. And we'll get to see Pat Peyton Manning and the Tennessee offense one more time. You've got to give that Florida offensive line an awful lot of credit during that last drive. They kept the ball on the ground. They took precious seconds and minutes off the clock, allowing now for their defensive team to play differently than they could have had to play if they had gone in there and punted that ball. Great job by the Florida offensive lineman. They took six minutes and 11 seconds off the clock on that series. So just 150 remaining, no timeouts for Tennessee. <laughs> Gotta get out of bounds. Copeland does indeed at the 33. Let's get an update quickly in New York. Pat O'Brien. All right, Jim, Virginia Tech went up 30 to 14 on Rutgers behind this 19 yard touchdown run by fullback Brian Edmonds. Tech, they're for real, recorded 13 wins in a row, and Virginia Tech will be at Syracuse next Saturday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports in a huge Big East matchup. Let's go back to Jim Nance. 
All right, Pat, thank you. We look forward to that. There's Manning. Left side this time. Price, he steps out at the 43. So 138 remaining. The lineup tonight on CBS will start with a season premiere of Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, Jane Seymour, touched by an angel, Walker, Texas Ranger. Their home openers tonight on CBS. And voids the sack and all the time that would have expired. Tennessee will next play in 10 days. Ole Miss at the Liberty Bowl. Then at Georgia. Alabama will come in here October 26th. Fact, they don't have to play right away following this game because the high expectation levels of the game that'll help them heal the wounds a little bit quickly and McCullough did not get out of bounds and the crowd's unhappy about that call about the spot Chester What Philip, sideline. what Philip Fulmer and his staff need to do, they'll have to convince their team that the season isn't over. They've got a lot of exciting games left. Peyton expresses his displeasure. That's good for a first. And that's Levine. You know, one thing about the Bowl Alliance this year is there's an extra spot in there worked in with the Southwest Conference and the Big Eight merging. So it's very possible if it's anything like last year and Tennessee was to run the tables on the rest of the regular season, volunteers could work their way back into the ball alliance by season's end. Well, they did, as you mentioned, they did last year, ended up the number two team in the country with huge win over Ohio State after being defeated by Florida soundly. Graham tackled at the 41. Again, the clock will run. 50 seconds. Manning spikes it, 36 seconds to go. No, 36 seconds to go, might as well take it to the end zone right now. now. Donnie Young, you saw the big right guard of Florida there, All-American type guard. Steve Spurrier talked about him in great detail, along with Mo Collins, the big left tackle, Zach Pillar, the right tackle, and Jeff Mitchell, the center. He said coming into this game, he had a very physical, strong offensive line, and they proved it today. That's the middle, and does he hold on for the catch? They give it to him. Joey Kent, what a collision. And he'll move the chains to stop the clock as well. 15-yard pickup. Manning's total now, 466 yards. Job by Joey Kent to hold on to it. It's a heck of a collision here. Joey Kent needs to get out get of bounds. the ball outside now. He's got to get it out of bounds. Down at the 14, but again, that's enough for a first. So that'll buy him some time. 18 seconds. This determined bunch wanting one more trip to the end zone. And 15 seconds on the clock now. Their score here, they're going to look back and actually say, wow, how about those last two possessions of the first half? And how about, how about going for two instead of maybe kicking extra points at that time or the field goal right before the end of the first half where they went on fourth and ten? You know, there's a lot of things that go through your mind. The, the, the reality of the situation is Florida came in and had such an explosive first half got a lead that was just too big for anybody to catch up. Manning to the end zone. McCullough, touchdown. Ten seconds remain. Manning's fourth touchdown toss. Phil Fulmer right now in his head 
He's saying, why can't we just have another two minutes on this game? Man. That's how you think. 35-28. That'll just kick it. Peyton Manning to Andy McCullough lays the ball up in a nice, beautiful arc. The only player who possibly could have caught the ball was McCullough. Outstanding throw by Peyton Manning. Extra point good. Now they hope for the recovery on the onside kick and one fling to the end zone. Could you imagine? What if? <laughs> it would not be the first time oh, that it's happened well. in football. No way. The first 35 of the game to Florida, the last 29 to Tennessee. Almost like two different games. If, when you analyze it, it was just so much like two different games. Steve Spurrier will look back on the game and he'll say, you know, we didn't get much going in the second half. He'll be disappointed with the way the offense played in the second half. But they didn't have good field position. And Tennessee played so much better defensively in the second half. They got the heat on Werfel, which they wanted to do in the first half. Next week, a game that will go a long way toward uh, determining the upper echelon of the Big East, Virginia Tech at Syracuse. Some will see Kentucky and Florida. The Gators coming home. It's next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time right here on CBS. Danny Werfel threw only 22 passes today, four for touchdowns. But look at Manning, 492 yards. And he got the touchdown total back even with interceptions. Four and four. With gutsy second half performance. Well, let's see what happens here. Hogue, the kick. It went right through everyone's hands and out of bounds. Florida football. And the headset comes off. Finally, the fourth straight year. The Tennessee falls to Florida. I know what Philip Fulmer is thinking. I know what he's going through right now. He's built a tremendous program here at Tennessee. The Tennessee players proved in the second half that they'll be back. They're going to keep playing hard all year. They've got an exciting team. This was just a better Florida team today, particularly in the first half. And the final snap to make it official. Two different halves we saw today, but Florida's start just too strong.